There's my girl. What are you doing out here? What are you doing out here? Howdy, I'm Jason Lewis. That's my dog, Pinto. And we're actually inside the Auto Edits garage for a change, and we'll be talking Mustang. That's my dog. All right, guys, come on in the garage here and let's have what I'll call the real talk about this Mustang project we've been calling Large Marge here on the Auto Edits YouTube channel. So, you know, if, you, if you're new to the channel, this is a 1973 Mustang Coupe, okay? I like that it's a coupe. It's easier to do the fastbacks because they were more popular. This is gonna be a little bit more unique. It's different. Um, it was very affordable to get into. <laughs> so those are some of the reasons that I, I started with this. But let me tell you about a bit of the battle that I've been dealing with and struggling with with this thing. Hey bud. That's Pinto. Hey buddy. You gonna help out today? Thanks bud. <laughs> All right, so here's kind of the theme that has just been popping into my head over the last year when I come to think of this project or come out to work on this thing. I just think of the word mistake, like all of the mistakes I've made on this thing. I mean, it's frustrating and I just been beaten the crud out of myself over this. Like I'll walk out into the garage and I'll just look and I'll think of all the mistakes I made. Like, why did I pull the interior out of this? Why did I blow this entire thing into pieces when, okay, first off, I hurt the motor. So I knew I needed to fix that. I definitely wanted to do the suspension. So I was really thrilled and I am excited, flat out excited to see how this thing drives with all the Chris Alston's total control products on here. This winter time was tough for me. I don't know about you guys. This is just real, real talk right here. I get depressed at the beginning of every single winter, the time change and just winter time, um, I go into a cave, I just, I, my brain doesn't function right. And that win this winter, it was hard to push through that with this car. I just didn't want to get out here. Um, and I thought, I just saw this car sitting for another year and I'm not gonna do that. This video is me trying to use this as a mechanism to get going and get started and just push through and do more. So to support that very plan of attack, what's next on the Mustang? All right, I made it another huge mistake, but it's okay. I ordered Flowmaster exhaust, the stainless steel U-fit system, an X-pipe, and <laughs> Super 10 mufflers for this thing because I'm, I wanted this thing to be loud. And that's not the problem. What became an issue is that I ordered all of this in three inch diameter tubing and couldn't figure out how to route that over the rear axle and get it out the back of the Mustang. I even removed the rear valence panel to measure and cut holes for the sweet stainless exhaust tips I ordered, but couldn't figure it out. Chalk that up to another mistake made, but in the meantime, I'm donating this kit to my buddy and his cool Chevy C10 project. That's a three inch tube right there. That's a two and a half inch tube. You don't think that that half inch makes that big a difference, but it does. Look at the difference there. Can you see that? It's huge. See that? So I went ahead and ordered up the Flowmaster two and a half scavenger X pipe, two, two and a half super tens. Now you're, I'm gonna show you in a minute here why I went with super tens, cause I want this thing to be rowdy. And then I'm gonna have to make um, my own version of a turn down. I don't really want that, but it's what I'm gonna have to deal with for now because we're gonna make it run. Then we'll deal with where we're gonna go with exhaust after that. So stay tuned for that. That's gonna be a fun one. So if you guys are wondering why super tens, that's why. Now along those lines of getting this thing running, I just made a huge order with Painless Performance Wiring. We're gonna be putting their Pro Circuit wiring harness in here, a track rocker. You guys are gonna love that. I just put the trail rocker in the Jeep and have been absolutely loving that install on the Jeep. It's been great. I can't wait to hook more things up to that. So I'm gonna put a track rocker in this thing, which is gonna give me relay switches and all kinds of um, power to run auxiliary things like, you know, the fans and uh, fuel pump and things like that. So 
I'm looking forward to getting that in and I'll share that install with you guys for sure because I'm gonna just show you guys how to wire a car from scratch. It's a tedious, time-consuming thing, but just take one wire at a time and I'll show you the basics of the circuit. Piece of cake, we're gonna get that thing going. So those are two big things coming up. Now here is something that I could use your guys' help with right here on the Auto Edits channel. Now I know we have several different projects. We have a lot of Jeep friends that are following the Jeep project. And I have a few and a growing group of people that like the Dodge Ram project. And I have like 18 of you that really love the Mustang project and I appreciate you guys. <laughs> Thank you for sticking it out so long. But help me by supporting the channel. Help me by liking or watching all of the videos I put up because that's how I keep this channel growing. If you guys are not liking some of the videos, um, I appreciate that you know you guys are here for a specific vehicle, but help me by just supporting the channel. So thank you guys, thanks for that. So here, let me bring you in and show you some other stuff and some decisions I also need your help with on the Mustang. I hear a Pinto. There she is. <laughs> and by the way, there's lots of other things coming down the pipe on the channel. I have a stack of parts right here. That's the Holley Terminator, the wiring harness and stuff that I'll show you the full install on that. I got cold air intakes from Delta Force and Flowmaster for both the Ram and the Jeep. I have a new winch cable for the Jeep and a new worn Epic hook to throw on there. We have the old wiring harness, uh, the haywire wiring harness that I was going to use in the Mustang, but I'm now going to give that to my buddy Elia for his C10 project. I'll show you some more stuff on that. And right there is a potential brake giveaway. Anybody want some brakes for their Jeep? Stay tuned for that video. All right. So one of the things that I'm just sharing the brutal honesty of what's going on with me right now. When your workspace starts to look like this, I don't know about you guys, but it starts to just close in on my brain. And this is one of the reasons why I get so depressed is that I'm just behind. I've been just frazzled getting a, a few projects done at a time and I don't do my cleanup and my reset. And then your workspace looks like this and then your brain looks like this on the inside as well. So I'm kind of dealing with that. I'm gonna try to tackle that in a second. But on the fun side, here's a gr really neat thing that I wanna get your guys' opinion on. Now I ordered these uh, auto meter cobalt gauges a while back for another project and I thought well this would be kind of cool because this is the stock gauge cluster in the Mustang and we're at that part now I need a target you know I don't want to just be starting it to see if it starts it's gonna start I want to make sure that I have gauges in there when I start it to make sure they have oil pressure and all that stuff so there's no rush to do that we're gonna do the, some of these things right so my thoughts were initially to put like tachometer and then I got a speedo here uh, in the stock holes in the gauge cluster, but the problem is is that you're really limited and there's just not a lot of room. I'll take you inside and show you in a second. So I'm thinking of other options and I was at the SEMA show this year and I saw that Holly has a 12.3 inch Pro Dash panel. So what do you guys think? Go with the, the standard analog gauges or a digital dash? I like the digital dash, I'll tell you why. You can actually, because I have the Holly EFI Terminator system on this, you can actually tune that thing and then you have multiple layouts, multiple setups. When we get inside there, I'll show you kind of my thoughts on going that way. But what do you guys think? All right, into the office. Oh, I forgot. Just have that set in here for now. But you can kind of see Things are shaping up nice. Having this mocked up in here is pretty cool. Now this, to the people that say, yes, you should definitely put the analog style gauges in these holes here, this is one of the reasons why I'm thinking that's not necessarily gonna be. I know it's classic car, but you gotta think of all of the reasons why a panel, an instrument panel like that will be handy. This is not actually that nice of a layout. You really are so limited and to put all of the gauges I want, boost, oil pressure, volts, fuel, all of these things, where are they gonna go? I'm gonna have to like put gauges all the way across here. So my thoughts are, instead of having this panel here, I'll definitely have to make, see where there's a actual um, air vent there. I'll have to just make something and then mount that 12.3 here and then I can actually design the layout and have multiple things in it and then also tune the fuel injection there. It's pretty cool. 
I'm kind of liking having a console here. So I'm thinking of putting either this and repainting it, re re restoring it and uh, putting it here. I am a big fan of engine start buttons. So I'm trying to figure out because you got to you got to kind of plan. If I put that engine start button, I've done this before down here in the dash where the key might be. Once you're in your harness, <laughs> you have to think of these things and you go to start that while you're strapped in, you can't reach that. See? So we're going to maybe put the engine start button down here someplace. How cool would that be? Right? <clears throat> so these are the fun things to do. I have um, the air conditioning controls will go here. I'll put the track rocker right here. At this moment in time, I don't have plans for a traditional stereo head unit going in here. Just don't care, want it running. So those are the kind of the priorities there. Oh, I have some junk to show you in the trunk. Okay, in the trunk here, we have finally mounted the Optima Red Top battery in place. So this is where I want this to live and it feels good. I don't even remember what brand mount this is. And I know that if I end up getting into more serious competitions, I'll probably have to put it in a box. But again, let's just get it right, get it running. Wait, what's the words? Get it running. And this is at least right because it's in place. Like this is, a, it's a good solid mount. And now I have a good solid target for all of my wiring. Now, when I made my big order with Painless Performance, I ordered their trunk relocate battery kit so it has longer cords and then I'll again show you guys how to wire a car from scratch or the basic principles of it and it's pretty fun it's easier than you think or it's harder than you think one of the two a little bit of both there is the stock wiring harness out of this vehicle and uh, that's right before we go and try to pull the right pigtails, whatever things we need off of this thing. I'm glad I kept that. That would have been yet another big dumb mistake. So I have that and I'll be able to scavenge all the pieces I need off of that to put on the painless wiring harness when we go to rewire this car. It'll be good. So here's something to give you an idea of how serious I am about the Mustang project. If you follow me on Instagram, auto edits Jason by the way, uh, you'll know that I picked up this Cadillac, uh, 85 Cadillac, Eldorado, Baritz, low, super low miles. I love the thing. I daily drive it. Um, and I wanted to like, you know, kind of tinker on it. I'm selling it. <laughs> I want it gone on. It's a distraction. I don't want to waste money or time on it. I want to finish the Mustang. So that just goes to show you, I'm in, I'm in this thing, right? Here, that thing right there. Who's that handsome guy in the spacesuit? That's me. All right, I have another fun little tidbit coming up on the Auto Edits channel. We have tool reviews. I finally got my hands on the Craftsman Brushless V20 tools. I'm gonna do some tool reviews on that. I also got this bad boy right here, which is one of the things I'm really excited about. I've been using air tools for wheels and this is gonna be a big help. So stay tuned for tool reviews. So there you go. There is the catch up and the what's to come here in the auto edits garage. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and share this video. That is the best way you guys can help me. I have no Patreons, I have no accounts trying to get more from you. I just want you guys to watch them and like these videos. Help support me across the platforms that I'm building here. So you Mustang guys, help me with the Jeep videos and the Ram videos. And you Jeep people, thank you so much for just being around and the Dodge people. So thank you and until next time, enjoy your drive. Where's my dog? There you go. Well, now what?